We might draw some kind of cute faces on a mandarin orange. That's what we usually do, but never on other fruit.、Uh. That is what I'm used to. Oh. On a mandarin orange, so that's why. Oh, and so. But no one ever draws on watermelons or bananas or apples that I've ever heard of. Maybe it's just you. Let's see the right answer. Oh, <laughs> you got it right. That was a good guess. You didn't just get lucky. You knew. In Malaysia, the word for this fruit is pronounced just like the word for luck. So it's like wishing luck to your spouse. That's the intention. It's very nice, isn't it? Well, thank you, Annie. Thank Let's you. bring out our next <laughs> contestant. She's number thirteen, Milky Foo. Hi, Milky. How are you? Hello. So, in Malaysia, the king of fruits, the durian. You know what a durian is, right? Yes. The leaves and roots of the durian tree have special uses. What do Malaysians do with the leaves and roots of a durian tree? A. Fry up the durian and make it into tasty dishes. B. Wrap up the durian. Tastes exotic. C. Make a sweet soup good for the kidneys and lungs. D. Brew a kind of tea for detoxification. What do you think? Um, I think I'm going to have to use the process of elimination to answer this question because durian is really stinky. But I know a lot of people like stinky. it. Stinky? Do you <laughs> like them? No, they're too stinky. I don't. <laughs> oh. Also,、hmm. the outside of the durian is really hard. So I think their leaves and roots are kind of like, hmm. Kind of like how the kids and their families are. What I mean is, in a family, the children are kind of like the leaves. The family is like the roots. So、uh, I think it's C. Apart from the first thing she said, I didn't get any of it. How about you? <laughs> you pick C. Yeah. You choose C. Make a sweet soup that is good for the kidneys and lungs.、Mm. You say it stinks, but you think it's good. It stinks, but it's good for you. For the kidneys、Because、and lungs. Because durians are well, maybe I wasn't clear, so you didn't understand. So maybe that was my fault. But I don't worry about <laughs> it. According to the Compendium of、um, Materia Medica, you can make medicine from them. Right. And parents hope their children can grow up healthily. And Malaysians like to do sports and practice Muay Thai for their health. But they always reserve the best things to give and take care of their children. So they'll make sweet soup with it to give the kids. And the hard outside of the durian is like a father. Protecting the whole family, and so the soup is like the mother who takes care of her children and feeds them well, so they're always happy, and it gets passed down through the generations. Very clear. I understand now. So then, was she correct? Oh no, it's D. The correct answer is to make a tea that's good for detoxification. Nature is、Too、amazing,、bad. isn't it? Durian fruit is quite hot, but its leaves and roots are used to soothe heat. Who would have guessed? I wouldn't have known that. It was really、mm. difficult. Thanks for trying. Thanks for trying.、Thank、okay,、you. number fourteen, Daisy Mung. Hello, Miss Mung. Good evening. According to Filipino traditions, what do people gather before the New Year to welcome in a lucky and prosperous year ahead? It's one of these things: a, eight pairs of red socks; b, ten、mm. different pens in different colors;、mm. c, thirteen different round-shaped fruits; or d, autographed photos of eighteen Miss Asia contestants. <laughs> Sounds nice. They all have to do with numbers. Uh, well, I think I can eliminate the fourth one about the、mm. autographs first. But, But I like that. I want those. <laughs> Me hey, too. I like them too. Okay, we'll eliminate the autographs.、Uh, It's probably not that the, one.、Uh, the eighteen autograph pictures of the Miss Asia contestants would be quite、uh, lucky things to have. So I'd like them too. Right.、Uh, and I also,、um, I think that the、uh, autographs would be a good way to represent. Uh, Asia, because、okay. us eighteen, we're all from different、oh, okay. parts of Asia, but it couldn't represent the Philippines very well. Right.、Um, all right, I go on. I think I can eliminate A.、Mm. Okay.、That's、the socks, because... not the socks. Right.、Mm, right.、Uh, because the national、uh, flag of the Philippines is made up、um, of four different colors all together. First, there's blue. That's up on the top, and then on the bottom below is red. But if we take the red and then put it on top. Then that would stand for war. So I、uh, think that's not the case. Because it's unlucky.、Right? So from that, I think it must be B or C.、Um, Choose one. Uh, I think it should be And C. And the numbers. What do you think? C because, you pick C. Right, because I think that roundness symbolizes reunion. Right. 
And I think that that But 13 place, is unlucky, right? Yeah, but I know that the Philippines is located in the tropics, and they have lots of different kinds of fruits, so right. they're easy for people there to find. Um, and I think that having fruit is auspicious during New Year for everyone. And besides, they say the more fruit one eats, the more beautiful they become. That's right. Just Correct. like the ancient Yang Guifei. She right. loved to eat lychees and was famous <laughs> right. for being very beautiful. All so right. let you see. Okay. Let's see if she's right. Correct! Thank 13 you. different round shaped fruits. Congratulations! Fruit. Actually, it's pretty difficult finding 13 different round shaped fruits. That's fruit. right, it's not easy. But if I you thought, can find them, it's I thought A was suspicious. the right answer. I know that apples represent safety. Also, safety, yeah, yeah also I've heard that before. Means there are lots like popularity. that. Yeah, I know. There are many like that. After all the contestants Thank complete you. the challenge, they might not answer correctly, but don't worry, it's okay. If they're creative in their answers, they can still earn plenty of points. And when we come back, four more contestants will take up the challenge. See, See you then. Be cool. Keep updated with the international music scene. Warner Music Power Station, Thursday night at 10. Good evening. Here's a look at tonight's headlines. The first person to be penalized for trying to take more than the permitted amount of milk powder across the border has been fined $5,000. His arrest came as Security Secretary Leitung Kwok vowed to strengthen border checks to prevent smuggling of infant formula. People were seen lugging bags of diapers today because they're not subjected to limits. Financial Secretary John Zung says he's concerned about the jobless rate going up and has suggested developing the four pillar industries. He also admitted that the current economic situation is still uncertain. Treasury Minister Chan Ka Kung, meanwhile, defended Zung's budget, saying it's impossible to meet the public's high expectations. Hot air balloon rides in Egypt are set to resume as early as next week after being suspended following a crash which killed 19 people, nine of them from Hong Kong. Relatives of the Hong Kong victims are heading to the ancient Egyptian city of Luxor to hold a memorial service. Six of the Hong Kong victims have been identified by relatives. Join me for the late news at 11. Everywhere they go, they bring with them their gratitude for life. The life that makes them happy and inspires creativity. Leisure time. Ramble round the Southern Guangdong Greenway this Sunday night at 8.40. In an age where a woman's destiny was decided by her beauty, even the fairest in the land had to fight. She refused to be one of 3,000 mistresses and was ready to give up just about anything just to win his love. ATV World Spectacular The Magnificent Concubine Sunday night at 9. What happens out there is real. Get the latest European news and current affairs. Whatever happens, when it happens, you're always the first to know. Check in Current News, European Journal, every Monday night at 8. This is a story about a man going after his dream. He never stops looking for one moment in his life. Because beauty is what he chooses to believe in. Nature's Unique Angles, Monday night at 10. Undivided attention, respect, that's what the lady deserves. Or at least, 
that's what the Indonesian ladies deserve. This is one of the most popular ice cream, strawberry ice cream. All about documentary, Million Makers, Thursday night at 10.05. Reports from the heart of Berlin. Take a closer look at the development in one of the most powerful countries in Europe. How much do you know about Germany? Check in current news. People and politics, Friday night at 8. What a great question and answer segment this has been. Right, So far, are. we've had five <laughs> contestants accept the challenge, and there's more to come. That's right, Gilbert. So now let's bring out the sixth contestant. She's number 15, Mindy Sue. Hello. Have you been to Korea, Mindy? No, never. I've never, never been eh? there. Right. Huh, too bad, because your question is about Korea. <laughs> right. So here it is. What do Koreans give to students? So they'll have good luck in their exams. Right. Your choices are A. Kimchi. Is it B. A baseball. C. A newspaper. Or is it D. A roll of toilet paper? I think it's either B or maybe D. A baseball or either a, a huh? roll of toilet paper. Why is that? A baseball or a roll of toilet paper? Why? Huh. Well, because I think a baseball can also symbolize luckiness. So, if you give a student a baseball, he can score a metaphorical home run in every subject. He can fare well in the exam. Oh, so a baseball represents good luck. Oh. Right. Oh. And then, for a roll of toilet paper, it's like, because it's a roll of paper, you can keep taking and taking from it, symbolizing an endless wealth of knowledge. Ah, a wealth of knowledge, huh? That's interesting. Ah, uh, yeah, but you're only allowed to choose one. You're only allowed to choose one. Right. Then I pick the toilet roll. The toilet, the toilet roll? roll? Right. <laughs> At least they could use it to dry their tears if they fail. Or maybe they could use it to dry their sweaty faces when they see right. like, difficult questions on their test. Or cheat by writing the answers on the back. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, let's see if she's right. Hey, she is. She is correct. But I think we have to explain this one. You see, in Korean... A toilet paper roll is pronounced mat, which in Korean is a homonym for the word solve, as in to oh, solve a problem. I see, so it? giving toilet paper symbolizes solving problems. Ah, oh, great. Thank you, Miss Sue. So now let's Thank welcome up the next contestant. Bianca Wong Stamenga. Good evening. Hello. Hello. I have your question here. Are you ready for it? Mm. Here's the question. In Kazakhstan, the locals like to sacrifice a lamb to serve to their guests on special occasions. But which part of the lamb do they serve to their guests? A. The leg. B. The belly. C. The nose. Or D. The face. I'd like to ask, do you eat lamb? Actually, I don't eat lamb. You don't eat lamb, I understand. Mm -hmm. Well, then. So then you... Uh... So, never mind. Just guess. <laughs> which one do you think? I think it's yeah. A. I think a. it's the leg. But why? Lamb leg. Well, uh, because I don't think, um, I wouldn't want to eat its face. <laughs> right, I see, but is there a special reason for this answer? When there are guests, why treat them to a leg of lamb? I mean, lamb legs are huge, right? Uh, because lamb leg sounds nice. It sounds tastier than the other parts that you mentioned before. But lamb belly hot pot is pretty tasty. Uh, I'm too scared to eat that. They don't that. know how to make hot pot. <laughs> it's Kazakhstan. Uh, uh, maybe they do. I mean, <laughs> you never know. All right, let's see what the correct answer is. Huh? It's your least favorite one. The one you didn't like, because people of Kazakhstan think that right. treating their guests to lamb face is like giving face, you see. So they serve lamb, lamb face. face to their guests. All yeah, right. Mm. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Bianca. Let's welcome contestant 17. Stephanie Che. Hello, everyone. Hello, you have such a nice smile. <laughs> okay, have you been to Thailand? I've not been there yet. Not yet? I'll go with you when I'm free. <laughs> 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 Just kidding. Okay, here's your question. Which of the following is an actual Thai festival? Your choices are A, Monkey's Buffet Day, B, 
Transvestites praying for a boyfriend day. C, the Tuk Tuk Festival. D, oh, this one sounds good. Pineapple oh, like fried rice now. half price day. <laughs> Actually, if I had it my way, I'd like it to be D. <laughs> D, you like pineapple fried rice too? Is yeah, it your favorite? Yeah, because I really like pineapple. Ah. Because oh. there's lots of vitamins in pineapples, and ladies who want to be pretty can mm. eat it to stay thin. Man, most importantly, you get 50% off, right? Mm. Yeah, 50% off sounds good. Um, yeah, it really does. But... Do you know how can to prepare you cook? it? I mean, do you know how to cook? Fried rice. I can. I like cooking. You can. Well, I have some pineapples at home. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you choose Big this one. one, or which answer is your final choice? I pick A, because I've, I've heard in mm. Thailand there's a monkey festival. It's supposed oh. to be around mm. the time <laughs> of the National Day. Really? But why the monkeys? Why give monkeys a buffet? Why? Yeah. Because during the National Day, everyone's celebrating and happy. And so maybe they treat monkeys to a fruit buffet because of that. Oh. oh. Let's have a look at the answer and see if you got it right. Oh. Yeah? You're I right indeed. You right. It's easy to set up awesome. a buffet for monkeys. You just need to give them plenty of but, bananas. Right. <laughs> since they even have a feast for the monkeys, maybe the judges could take me for a meal sometime. Why not? <laughs> for those who haven't had a buffet before, don't be jealous. <laughs> right. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Stephanie. <laughs> Welcome contestant 18, Vika Kong. Hello. Good evening, Vika. Hello. Hello. All right, get ready because Danny's about to ask your question. Which is, in Russian tradition, before someone moves into a new house, what do they put in that house the day before they move in? Is it A, a dog, B, a parrot, C, a hedgehog, or D, a cat? Um, I think the answer is probably either B or D. Either B or D, the parrot. Uh, Why is that? Why well, do you think the parrot? Because parrots are supposed to be able to talk, right? So if you put one of those in the house, they'll be able to liven up the place before people move in. Also, parrots can kind of cheer people up and bring them, like, happiness and if joy, If you put you know? a parrot in a house, what do you think its first words would be? <laughs> Anybody home? <laughs> yes, they can guard the house. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> right. And then cats are very... Spiritual animals, and so then if you put one in a house, it can, uh, it can ward off negative energies in the house, and besides, it can catch mice and stuff like that, insects and things. What about dogs? They're good too. They could guard the because, house and ward off burglars. <laughs> because I think dogs are usually brought into the house after someone moves in, because they're not independent pets. Oh, so you mean that if you put a parrot or a cat there, you could leave it and chase it away later? <laughs> right. Oh, really? <laughs> they don't need care. <laughs> That's so cruel. <laughs> All right, let's see if this is the correct answer. Oh, wait, she uh, hasn't chosen I'll yet. I'll pick. Choose one. Then. You've narrowed it down to either B or D. Then. Which one do you think it is? B, then. B. B for boy. Parrot? Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see if that's the right answer. Oh. Uh, it's D. Oh, a cat. Why is the cat the correct oh. answer, though? Well, the right answer is the cat for two reasons. First, they catch mice, but also right. because to Russians, the cat is like a kitchen god. So oh. like us, we have different gods for protection. Right. I guess they do too. Oh. So it seems a cat is a lucky figure in Russian households. So okay, very good. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you, Vika. You. Pretty good, huh? Yeah, not bad. You know, I've really enjoyed this question and answer segment. Having the contestants contribute to the questions helps us learn quite a bit, right? That's <laughs> right. We learned I had no quite idea a lot. Russians have a kitchen god too. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? And I didn't realize contestant number three, Svetlana, well, like tries right, yeah. medicine so much, right? You should chat about it when you're free. <laughs> Yeah, of course. And what about the Malaysian one? I mean, a girl putting her name and contact number on a piece of fruit and throwing it in the ocean. It makes me wonder how many Malaysian men drown every year trying to get one. Right. Huh? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. When we come back, we'll be giving out two more awards, the Great Intelligence Award and the Best Team Award. We can almost tell who we think is going to win the Best Team Award, though, eh? That's right, but we'll find out after the break. And we'll also be finding out who are the top four finalists. See you after the break. See you then. Yeah. After the break. Love it. Say it. Discover the latest and the hottest trends in Japan. Feel the pulse of the vibrant and fabulous culture. JP Time TV, 
Sunday at 6:25 p.m. What the health is all about? They say it can be anything that improves the quality of life. Every week, the specialists will come on the show to give you tips on beauty and health. They will keep it simple, keep it real, and keep you in good shape. Every Sunday night at seven. Keeping them honest is what we do. So many questions out there. Someone has to ask. Face to face challenge, and all the hottest topics are only on Newsline. Every Sunday night at eight. Use your time wisely. Make every hour of every day count. Discover the real meaning of life. On Hour of Power. Every Sunday morning at nine, repeats every Saturday morning at ten. The Mayans have left us a message, but what does it really mean? One scientist decided to find out the answer. The answer to the ultimate question is December the twenty-first. The end for all of us. 2012, the final prophecy. Monday night at nine. Every day we learn from him, from her, from someone we barely know. But what does it mean to you and me? Find out the answers on Global 3000, Thursday night at eight. Be cool. Keep updated with the international music scene. Wanna Music Power Station, Thursday night at ten. Support the community chest. Join the New Territories Walk on March the third, two thousand and thirteen. This year, our contestants will be split into two separate groups. Contestants、mm. number one to nine are overseas contestants,、right. and contestants ten to eighteen are all Chinese. That's right. Now, apart from competing to be the winner, first and second runners up. They're also competing for an award, which is the best team award. Best team.、Mm -hmm. From its name, you can tell that it's not an individual award; it's an award for the team. And how does it work?、Mm. We'll look at whether there are more contestants from China, Hong Kong, and Taiwan, or overseas contestants who are making it to the top four places, and the group、right. with more will win. This is tough. They're all such strong contestants.、Right. It's so close this year, right? Not、yeah. really. We already have a winner. <laughs> we can、you、already have. Hey, not us, yet. Not yet. All right. All right. Then, in that case, why don't we recap who's made it as our top nine finalists? All right. Okay. 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 Contestants number three, Svetlana Gulikova. Number ten, Amy Chen. Number eleven, Annie Chi. Number thirteen, Milky Fu. Number fourteen, Daisy Mong. Number fifteen, Mindy Chu. Number sixteen, Bianca Wong. Number seventeen, Stephanie Chen, and number eighteen, Vika Kong. Right. All right. Next, we're going to、right. give out the Great Intelligence Award. The recipient may not、mm. have gotten、mm. the right answer, and the contestants who answered right may not have scored well. Right. Because most importantly, right. creativity right. in their answer counts. A lot of our contestants showed great creativity. Yeah. Like, yeah. like of the girls in your group. I was really <laughs> surprised. In my group? Oh, there were、uh, a few that I like. Four in particular, actually. What? That's right. Well, I really like the contestant <laughs> from India who said that her family visits the Chinese medicine doctor. It seems that she really knew what she was talking about. In fact, she even took my pulse. Right. She was really doing it right too. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. They were in the way. You can't check through. I want to ask Danny, who plays a doctor on TV, <laughs> what he thought of it. How she did? How many points would you from give her from the screen? It really seemed like she knew how to take a pulse. She was、uh, really good. Right.、Uh, but I guess. 
if she did it right mm. and needed to tell you about your health, I suppose you wouldn't I guess be so. able I to guess you're right. saying, right? I still like that Malaysian one best. About tossing fruit in the ocean to get to know the ladies. Well, let's not argue over that anymore. I have the results here with me. <laughs> right. Huh? Yeah? It's her. Mm. Mm. All right. To present former executive chairman of Asia Television Limited, honorary chairman of Asia Club, Linus Chung Wing Lam, JP. Miss Asia Great Intelligence Award 2012 is... The ATV Miss Asia Great Intelligence Award 2012 goes to... ATV Miss Asia Great Intelligence Award 2012 goes to... Number 18, Miss Vika Kong. Contestant 18, Vika Kong. Mr. Linus Chern, please present the award to Miss Kong. Miss Vika Kong is 19 years old. She represents Jiangxi, China, and she's a student. Congratulations to number 18, Vika Kong. Thank you, Mr. Linus Chung, for presenting the award. Congratulations. Well, it's time to name the top four finalists. I'm so nervous. Well, you're not the only one who's so nervous. <laughs> oh, I bet the audience is nervous that's too, right? right? Because right after we announce the top four, we'll find out who the winner of the best team award is. That's right. You announce nah. it. I'm also aware that there's something special uh -huh. about this year's arrangement. Okay. That's right. I'll explain slowly. First, right, okay. we'll reveal the scores okay. of eight of the contestants. Okay. We'll keep one secret at first, mm. because mm. out of nine, four get to stay, mm. which means five will be eliminated. So, the five contestants who have the lowest scores will be out. Okay, let me repeat it one more time. So Mr. Van Dam has no idea what you're talking he about. He doesn't get it? <laughs> well, I barely do. Okay, we're going to reveal the scores of eight of the contestants. Since we're going from nine to four, five contestants will be eliminated. So, the four contestants with the lowest score will be eliminated right away. So, it's that simple. Mm. We'll announce the top three of the top four, and they'll go on. That's right. And the fourth will have to wait till the last contestant's score has been revealed before finding out if she's made it, right? I think you got mm. it. 